Okay, so today we're going to be doing a review on this product which I just bought. I've always been wondering what shed and fence sprayers were like. So this is the Wagner W100 and um, the reason I bought it was I normally hand paint everything but um, basically I've got something a little bit awkward to uh, paint today. If you can see here can't see all of it but um, this is basically a, a folding room divider and it's got many nooks crannies crevices recesses and it'd be really awkward to paint I think with a brush and probably to get a good finish so I thought I'd give a go with a paint sprayer as I know they get into the nooks and crannies a bit better and um, I've put a big plastic sheet down on the garden which is a, a plastic decorator sheet useful because they're plastic coated and they don't let anything go through them and um, so you can let it dry on there afterwards or um, you know or, or it's easy quite easy to wipe off so nothing's going to get on the garden or the surface that you're, you're actually spraying in and there's actually a very tiny tiny breeze today um, can't wait around in England for the weather to get good obviously so let's see what you get so out of the box you've got the piece has the motor on it and that's your motor in the back and, and your handle and you also get in the box this so this is your trigger your spray nozzle and you'll notice on this one as you can see there but it's got a picture of a picket fence on it because it's for spraying fences this one and they actually do a different attachment if you want to be doing walls and stuff like this so this is really things for um, it does do wood and metal but this is more for doing your, your wooden shed or your fence or something like I'm going to try and do today um, it's pretty easy uh, you've got a paint canister um, it's not actually that big so I've actually ordered a bigger one for when I'm doing a fence or something um, and inside you'll see that there's a nozzle that collects the paint and um, this actually rotates because if you're leaning forward you want it to get it from the front of the receptacle and if you were pointing upwards obviously your paint goes the opposite way as it gets empty so you can rotate it round if you're spraying in an upward position okay so the normal one I would expect most people for most people is to point that forward and it goes into your, inside your canister and it screws on and off. It says it screws on and off really easy. <laughs> there we go. Nice big screw thread goes on nice and easy. Um, the other thing that you've got, um, obviously in the packet, you get some other things. Um, you get what is effectively a paint stirrer. It also comes with a corner that's for getting the painting open. Now if you can see this little point here, this is for if you accidentally leave this for too long and a bit of paint dries in that centre nozzle, it means that you've got this little pointy stick. You could use your finger if you wanted to, but you've got this little pointy stick that you can get in there. Okay, and that will clear it up for you. The other thing that you'll see that it says in the instructions about this is that it has a um, piece that you can hang on the side of your can and the other thing is these increments here and if you look in the instructions you'll see that it explains you can't see it because it's printed in yellow but it says that if you fill the paint up by that much to that notch it's there and then you'll see there's a square if you were to fill with water to the top of there that would be adding 10 percent to your um your paint because one of the things that they say in there is if you find that your paint's a, a little bit thick when you stir it or if you put it into your pot and it's not coming out very well is that you can add up between five and ten percent of paint so that's your measuring guide for adding 10 percent then of course you've got to give it a really really good stir to make sure that um, you've got good consistency in there um, one other thing that you get in the bag is they do supply you with a Wagner 
particle mask for when you're spraying and obviously you get a set of instructions okay so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, got some uh, cuprinol paint this has got silver birch which is what we're using today and all I'm going to do is get some of that into the container and uh, see how we go from there by the way one thing I will just quickly mention for you obviously you can see the two different parts that you've got um, it's very simple you turn one at 90 degrees to the other you put it inside and you lock it and that's it it's on okay so you've also got now so you've got a trigger a nice trigger okay you have to tell you in your hand as you can see it leans backwards slightly but when that's full of paint you're going to find that it's probably quite nicely balanced in there okay and there's a couple of other things i should actually mention before we try and do any of this if you look at the nozzle on the front you've got three different ways that you can use it you can use it in the side to side position which is for spraying upwards and downwards you can turn it like that and that's for going sideways and then if you get a little bit of a awkward area if you just position it in between the two you get more of a circle um, which is kind of would get into a corner or something like that so I would suggest that because there's three different ways Probably what you want to do is maybe like on here we we'll concentrate on doing it that way first and that will do all of our strokes along and then stop twist it and we can do all of our strokes that are um, up and down and then so I have got some quite awkward little nooks and crannies we might try it at the angle and see if we need to get in the corner okay but the first thing to do is to see obviously how it comes out so I'm just gonna oh sorry keep forgetting things one more thing you've got this thing here it's a little wheel on the back and what it basically does is it adjusts the amount of paint that's coming out the nozzle so you can turn that to either have more paint or less paint of course you don't know what it's going to come out like until such time that you actually start having a go with it okay I think that's covered everything so pushing the lever down and then just twist this back off, it comes off, there's absolutely no effort at, at all in doing that. So we're going to take the canister back off. Um, I've already given this a good stir, looks really, really runny. Um, let's have a go with it and see what it does. So you can see I've filled it about half full. Um, first time using it for me, but no, how much, no idea how much I will need for this. Um, so I'm just starting off with about half a pot um, to see how we get on. Again, put it back on. I love doing things live because if it goes wrong, it goes wrong, doesn't it? Click that on there, okay. So, I'm going to do in the vertical position, which I believe is for doing in this direction. Um, one quick thing to note, um, you see I've got it plugged into an extension lead. The lead to it is not massive. Um, you might actually be better off with an extension just has a single socket on the end, so you've not got this weight. There's a possibility, depending on the size, I think if you may be doing something like a door, you might need to, um, you know, uh, be able to have a little bit more lead than this I would personally have liked a little tiny bit more but there we go we've got what we've got haven't we so let's uh, let's pull the trigger and see what happens don't forget your mask you might want some goggles as well but it's uh, Certainly no um, 
the wind's completely dropped now and it's a lovely day. There we go, make sure it covers your nose and your face well. Really good when you pull the plug out. So, if you're wondering what just happened to me trigger and it was squirting out in a single squirt it started perfectly and what I'd realized was that the plug had slightly come out of the extension and when it does that there's obviously still some pressure in there and it just spurts it out so people, people I don't wonder what was going on but it's because the plug had come out complicated shape would be really really awkward and I've only really tried to spray the top but you can see that it's actually got into some of the underneath parts as well so I'm really happy with that for a first attempt. What I'm going to do now is uh, going to use the detail which was to turn the nozzle halfway in between the two uh, and I'm going to spray um, towards it that way and try and get on the inside a bit better. the opposite way now. Thank <laughs> you. 
think that's um, pretty amazing, to be honest. Um, I've got some, got to go round the other side and get into this side of it because we can still see wood here. I want to shoot it from the other side, but you know, I, I dread to think how much time I would have spent trying to do that. And uh, at first glance, obviously, if you haven't got a perfect coat, it's two, se two seconds and you, you know, you're away with another coat. And um, one of the things I did notice on the website was it did say that if you look and you can see a few imperfections, that means that you don't actually necessarily have to wait for it to dry. Um, you can just go straight on in there. Um, and then the thing with this is I do really need to let it dry properly. And then I'll need to flick it over and, and do the other side. But as I said, I'm a newbie. I've never used a spray gun before. Um, I think I can fairly say that um, I'm pretty impressed with that. Um, does a really, really good job. Um, if you're interested in having one, um, you know, they're pretty cheap. I think I bought this one for around about £60. Um, depends on how time much you've got to do, but if you can just imagine how much time that's going to save you with um, things like fences particularly, um, or large sheds, um, I would suggest it's probably going to pay for itself. Um, the biggest detail I think that you need to be um, careful with is obviously if I leave this now and the nozzle starts to dry, I need to make sure that that is clear before I, um, you know, before I start using it again. And then the big thing is afterwards is to get as much paint out of the pot if you can, if it's not empty. Um, and then you've got to basically put a, a warm soapy solution in here and then spray it into like an empty bucket or a washing bowl, whatever you've got. You could do it onto your garden if you wanted to. And you've got to keep doing that until the water that comes out of the nozzle is clean. And then that's gonna show you that everything um, that is inside there has been like thoroughly washed out. Um, the other thing obviously about your bowl, you could buy some spare ones if you were thinking of using more than one type of paint in there regularly. Um, but keep it clean, you know, make sure it's properly cleaned out uh, before you go on uh, to put another type of paint or another colour um, of paint in there. So there you go. I'm pretty impressed. You know, I've seen the bigger ones up to £400. I was like, I'm not going to be doing that much painting with it. So what I'll do is I'll just get the smaller one and see how it goes. But yeah, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, if you want to see where I got it from or to, to look for it online, I'll leave a, a link below for you in the description um, so you can pick one up for yourself. Okay, so just the final bit then. The second side is now drying. Again, took me less than probably two minutes to do that, including all the nooks and crannies. Just a couple of things I've noticed just for you to... Um, to, for when you've finished with your work, okay? There's one thing is, it's much easier to take this off when you're dealing with the pot, when it's full of paint or water. Um, best to detach it from the actual gun, which obviously is just push down the lever and twist and it's off. Um, the second thing is, I would say, is that I ran a little bit of water through it already and I didn't think it was cleaning very quickly, but of course what I didn't notice was that there's an awful lot of residue paint stuck up there which of course is going into the water that you're trying to clear it with so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to give that dries see, see water-based paint it dries very very quickly and obviously we don't want this this color to be in here when we're doing our next color which is probably likely to be a different color unless you're doing a, a big fence the same over a couple of days but either way it's obviously much easier to get off while it's still actually um, damp, good microfiber cloth, get it wet. And you can see the tube now is coming up clean. Get it out of the thread. Some of it's a bit awkward. But that's it so that's nice and that's nice and clean now so we can put that back on here pop him on there so it's so much easier it's like 10 times easier to put on and with it attached on the gun okay back 
back with your motor. Turn it to 90 degrees. Again, easier to turn this than this. And you're on. And then we're going to spray it into just an old empty bucket until the water goes clear. <laughs> not too bad it's got a little bit of mist in there so get rid of that so this is clear water now all I'm going to do is just run it through until that's all out of there Okay, so yeah, perfectly clear water, and I don't know if you could hear it at the end there, but basically as the as the pot becomes empty, obviously the nozzle starts to uh, splutter a bit. Um, doesn't look like there's any paint on the nozzle, but what I am going to do is, actually there is a little bit of paint on the nozzle, I think it's because I'm using grey and the, the nozzle is grey. Obviously if you're using white you'd notice it a hell of a lot easier. But. Uh, Make sure that's nice and clean. And that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And said I'll leave a link uh, underneath for you to find out where I got that from. Thank you.